Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are getting jazzy with Smewful. Finale released 27.2 today, about three, three and a half months after they released 27.1, which is actually kind of quick in terms of Finale points upgrades, I think, which is kind of exciting. Um, now, 27.2 is one of those updates that I think is going to be really critical for some people. For other people, it's probably not going to be all that important, but that's sort of par for the course sort of the, for these point upgrades. The main thing is this uh, this new Jazz document that I'm going to talk about in in, uh, in a minute, but this is really the, the biggest part of it. But there's some other things, so let me just throw out some highlights. Uh, the first is that 27.2 will now run natively on Apple Silicon, so if you have one of the new uh, Mac M1 uh, computers, uh, that's a big deal. You can actually run Finale uh, natively on that. Of course, it'll run natively on Intel computers as well. All of the default documents and document styles in the setup wizard are now Smewful compliant. Um, the old ones still exist. I'm going to talk about that uh, in a second. And then, again, the biggest thing is really this revamped uh, jazz font document, which was created with the help of Darcy James Argue, who's definitely one of the experts in the, the field of jazz arranging and jazz uh, engraving. So this is really cool that they collaborated together to create this default file, and there's some really nifty stuff, and I'm going to spend probably the majority of this video talking about that. Uh, just a couple other things here. The symbol selection and document style windows are now alphabetized correctly for other languages. Uh, there are some updates to sharing. There are improvements to the user manual, which I haven't been able to see yet because I'm looking at a uh, version of 27.2 before it's officially released, and they don't release the new user manual until the day that they release 27.2. So I, that's something I can't even check right now. And there are some you know, small but useful bug fixes that I'll talk about at the end of the video. So stick around to the end just to, to kind of check out what those are. Again, it, there's nothing you know, major like they fixed a bug that's been in the program for 10 years type of thing. But there's some more immediate bugs that, that got fixed, which are kind of uh, important. So uh, I'll talk about that towards the end. But it's really the second and third thing that I want to talk about, which is the setup wizard, the document styles, and then this this uh, revamped uh, jazz document. So just real quick, let's go into the setup wizard so I can show you what happened here. Uh, it looks the same, like the, the, the layout is the same as 27.1, but what's important here, first of all, the first two documents are still... Uh, the um, Smoothful Compliance Broadway font and the Smoothful Compliant Maestro font as they were before. But now when you go in to open these categories, the band uh, document style here is Finale Maestro font, which is Smoothful. Same with Jazz Band, which is the Finale Broadway font, Smoothful. Um, so all of these uh, document styles are now Smoothful. In some of these categories, like the Coral, you'll actually get both side by side. So here's the Finale Engraver. This is the Smoothful versus the Engraver, which is a non smoothful same thing with the maestro and, and finale maestro. In the uh, same thing with the orchestral, the engraver, finale engraver, finale maestro, and maestro. The ones prepended with the word finale are smoothful, and the other ones are non smoothful. In the general category, um, all of these are smoothful except for this one. This is the um, old non smoothful version. This is the smoothful version. Uh, and they've also added a new handwritten Finale Ash style, which didn't exist before. The Finale Ash is a brand new font to version 27, uh, actually 27.0, they added this. So, uh, But they didn't have a direct way to access it through the setup wizard or any of the um, um, uh, templates that they have. So now they do, they actually have this, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, but the other thing is that if you really do want to go and use the non smoothful versions, all all of those still exist in the legacy default uh, category here. And it's organized the same way. You've got your band, choral, general, everything. It's exactly from the previous versions. These these will give you the non smoothful versions, which can be important in certain cases. I've talked about this before. If you're collaborating with people that don't have version 27 yet, it's really kind of um, important to keep using the non smoothful um, uh, versions because they can't open smoothful files in version 26 or previous. So um, these are here. And even if you're just used to using those files, you can still access them. You don't have to use the new Smoothful if you don't want to. So um, these are here for you if you want. But generally, now all of these uh, document styles are uh, prepared with the Smoothful versions as well. So, And then just like I said, I did want to point out the handwritten style Finale Ash. I actually already set up a file, so let me just cancel out of here. Here it is, the Finale Ash 
This is the new Finale Ash document style. This is built right out of the setup wizard. I did very little to this file other than open it with um, the setup wizard and then add a couple things. So all of this is in the Finale Ash family, the text, the lyrics, the, uh, the, you know, the articulations, the dynamics. This is all the new Finale Ash font. Um, and you can get it directly through the setup wizard. You don't have to go through hoops to change the font to the Finale Ash, etc. So that's a nice little addition that you can access this uh, right away. Now, talking about that new Jazz uh, file here, just to point out from the setup wizard, that really the only way to get to it is in the general category, and it's this one here called Handwritten Finale Jazz, and you'll see this is the Finale Jazz font Smufel. This is going to be the, the file that's gonna give you all of this nifty stuff that they added uh, to the Jazz font um, uh, file. This one right here, the Jazz font, this is the old non smufel version and is completely different, so just be aware of that. This is the one we're gonna talk about, um, and that's how you would access it from the setup wizard. And what you're looking at here is basically a file that's built from the setup wizard. I did very little to this. I did change some um, spacing things and I obviously created some titles and, and did a couple things, but this is pretty much as is out of the box. So um, this is what we're gonna look at next. This is the getting jazzy with Smufel. Again, Darcy James Argue collaborated with Finale to create this new template and there's a lot of nifty stuff in here. Um, so I'm gonna try and get through some of it. Um, uh, hope, hopefully it won't take too long, but uh, there's just a lot of nifty stuff. The first is that they actually added a brand new font. And if you're familiar with the Finale Jazz text font, you'll know that um, there are no lowercase letters. And this has always been an issue with this particular text. The, the title up here, by the way, is using that old font. So let's go in here and see that this is actually called Finale Jazz Text. Right, this is the font that they had been in Finale forever. It's basically this handwritten font where the lowercase letters are actually just small capital letters. That's the style of this font. They never had real lowercase letters. Well, they added an entirely new font and they're actually using it in the subtitle here. You can actually see small uh, lowercase letters and they called it appropriately Finale Jazz Text Lowercase. And this is a completely brand new font that uh, Darcy James um, uh, encouraged them to create, and they did, and uh, it's it's great because they use it all over the place in this document. You can even see, I mean, there's so many great little subtleties in this document. You can see how the title is underlined. That's sort of a, a common thing to do with these handwritten charts. The composer uh, tag, which I'm you know calling hosted by here, this is the uppercase version of the finale uh, text uh, jazz text font, but the arranger is the lowercase version. Just a lot of nice little details here. Um, all of the staff labels now now use the lowercase um, font, but things like the uh, the tempo markings are still using the uppercase version. So just a lot of nifty stuff. A lot of nice little details in terms of um, how they're using fonts now. In addition to all that, they've added a bunch of stuff. Like there's a whole bunch of added expressions, you know, in your tempo marks, you've got all kinds of things that are added to this category. Same with the alterations, uh, expressive text, you know, these are now underlined, which is sort of a, an interesting, um, or it's, it's just sort of part of the style of this uh, handwritten. Um, there's a bunch of extra technique text. The rehearsal marks have get get a little uh, brush up here. Um, so just a, you know, there's a lot of nice little details added to the expressions. Same thing with the articulations. Um, there's a lot of nice little uh, details that they've added here. I don't want to get too far into this because I can spend way too much time on this. Um, even things like the custom lines, you know, like they've added the writ with the underlying and underlined thing and everything. So, um, you know, things like solo break and stop time. Um, so you can do something like this and, you know, get a, a nice little uh, custom line uh, right out of the box. So, again, just a lot of nice little details in terms of the libraries. They've changed a lot of other things um, uh, in the document options. And one thing I actually really want to point out, which I think is kind of interesting, actually a couple of things here. Um, you'll notice that the time signatures, first of all, they're sitting in an interesting place. This is sort of part of the style. The, the four is sitting on the bottom line and it's, it's uh, you know, protruding from the top of the staff. This is different than the original version. Here's the original non smufel jazz file where you can see the time signature is, is centered. Um, well, they kind of change this a little bit. It's a nifty little detail. Another thing which I really find interesting, here's the old version. 
and just take a look at the, if I zoom in really far, take a look at the, the thickness of the staff line versus the bar lines here. They're almost kind of similar. The bar line's very so slightly uh, thicker than the staff line, but they're just about the same. But if we go into the, the new version, you'll see something completely different. The staff lines are actually very so slightly thinner than the original, but the bar line thickness is much thicker. A lot of other things are really thick too, like the uh, hairpins uh, lines are a lot thicker than the default document. Um, and then notice this, look at the ledger line. See how thick the ledger line is compared to the staff line? They did this with a lot of the lines in this new document. They're much thicker than they used to be. However, the staff lines remain very, very thin. And I think this is purposeful and part of the style because if you think about how they did handwritten charts back in the day, you know, they had these pre-printed uh, um, pages with the staff lines, which were printed pretty thin, but everything else was done with a pen. So the, the lines are much thicker, including the ledger lines. So that's why you're getting this huge difference between the actual staff lines and the ledger lines. Uh, it's just such a nice little detail that they added and it's it's very, very smart, I think, um, and helps get the, the point of the handwritten style across much better. The, the stem thickness is much thicker as well uh, than the normal default document. Again, it, it, just think about writing with a pen, all of these lines would be much thicker um, than the staff lines, which would have been pre-printed on the paper. So really nifty stuff that they did um, in terms of th those types of details. There's another detail that I want to point out that I think is really kind of important. The I'm sure you're familiar with staff styles and you press S and you get the slash. Well, the issue, especially on drum set parts, is that it was always difficult to get a slash notation with sort of cued notes above. And it's, it was always possible in Finale, it always is possible, um, but you have to add a new staff style that changes something in the uh, notation section. Well, they've kind of built that into the uh, new version uh, or the new file here. So now you have your slash notation, but now they have an additional one that works right out of the box, slash notation, show other layers. And the difference here, if I could go into the staff style, the difference is in the alternate notation settings here. Um, this staff style for showing other layers has all of these things down here checked. Uh, if you're familiar with how to do this, you know that you have to do you have to do this. You have to create this alternate st slash no notation staff style with all these things checked, and then you can go about um, adding your things. But they they did this out of the box, which is really nice, um, particularly for you know maybe intermediate users that don't really know how to deal with this. It's already there. It works out of the box, and it's it's you know it's great that they added this. In addition to that, they made a nice little change in the document options under layers. Um, first of all, the the settings for layers one and two, um, if you're familiar with the default document, they have the floating rests normally at six for layer one and negative six for layer two. They've kind of changed this. Um, I don't quite know why, but I, th I have seen this before. I think it's more in the style of this handwritten thing to have the, the floating rests a little bit closer to center. But in addition, they've changed the settings in layer four. First of all, the floating rests are by six steps. Um, they are freezing stems up and down in layers three and four. But one thing that they unchecked here was apply adjustments only if notes are in other layers, which means that no matter, you can put notes in layers three and four, and whether there are notes in other layers, these um, uh, layer three notes, for example, will always free, uh, freeze upwards and the rest will always float by six steps no matter what. So this option unchecked uh, allows that to happen, which means that with this new staff style here, if we were to add notes in layers three, and I'm just gonna go up here to my, um, uh, there we go, my rhythm cue line here. I'm gonna go down to layer three. I'm gonna enter some notes here. Um, you'll see that the, the layer three notes are going to freeze upwards, even though I don't have anything else in layers one, two, or four in this case. So you're kind of automatically getting this uh, situation that you probably want in your drum set part. And we can always go into here, note beam and rest editing, and hide the ledger lines as well, so that you can get that, that sort of um, big band cueing thing above the drum set part here really easily without having to you know change all of these settings manually. It's all set up. And you can use layer fours as well if you want some uh, bass drum parts here um, the the notes will freeze down even if I didn't have layer three here they would freeze down so really great that they did this out of the box it just works like this you don't have to create that new um, staff style it's it's already there 
just a great uh, detail that they added to this. So, And then sort of the big, big, big thing that they did in this file, uh, and I'm kind of saving it for last, last, is the chord suffix library. First of all, you just saw me type C minor, and I do get a lowercase m. This has uh, kind of been an issue sometimes with these uh, jazz fonts is that you didn't have the lowercase letters. I'm just going to go into the or chord definition. I'm going to go into my chord suffix dialog box here to show you what's going on. Now, this suffix library is exhaustive. There's a ton of things going on here. Uh, 182 different chord suffixes, which is pretty large um, out of the box for Finale. And what, they, what they've done is that they've given you a lot of different versions, particularly of the minor. You see you have an M, you have an MI, you have an MIN, and you also have the dash for the minor. So you have a ton of different options depending on how you want to see these things. Same thing with the major seven, you have the MA7, you have the, the triangles for, for major, you have the, the lowercase MAJ7, so um, just a ton of options. And then obviously all the permutations with the um, sharped and flat alterations, they all exist here. There's a lot of stuff built in with the stacked uh, uh, alterations here, you know, double stacks and even triple stacked. Um, and there's just, it's, it's a great suffix library. I've been exploring this a bit recently and there's, there's just so much uh, stuff that you can do here. Now, getting into the weeds a little bit here, let me just show you something. I'm going to go into this suffix for a second just to ch check this out. Now, if you're familiar with how these jazz suffixes used to work, these were actually created as single characters within the jazz font, which has always been weird because you, that means you couldn't edit these, you couldn't create custom suffixes. And if I just go into the symbol here, go to go into the symbol uh, selection dialog box, not for the lowercase font, but for the uh, Finale Jazz font here. This is the Smithfield Finale Jazz uh, font symbol selection dialog box. In the alternates and extras, if we scroll down a little bit, what you'll see are these pre-built suffixes. This is how this used to work with this font. Um, you had these pre-built suffixes, and this is what you had to use. There was no um, editing these because it's one piece. Uh, what they did with this new file and with these new fonts and everything, and they actually edited the Smeeful Finale Jazz file um, to add a bunch of new uh, pieces. They basically stripped, a, stripped apart those pre-built suffixes into pieces so that they can actually create chord suffixes that you can edit and you can add to, which is really cool. They added a, a bunch of extra things you know, that you need, including the medium size and the tall parentheses. These are actually separate characters now. It's not like you have one parentheses that gets resized for, you know, the uh, the double stacked um, versions here and the triple stack. These are actually different parentheses. And evidently they had to go through a bunch of uh, uh, programming under the hood to get Finale to recognize when you type a parentheses um, and then you get the rest of the suffix. It has to use one parenthesis in one situation, another parenthesis in another situation. So apparently there's some sophisticated programming that they actually added to the, uh, the way that you type chords in Finale in order to get this to work. Actually, let me just jump over. I have a whole other file here that has a bunch of these suffixes in it that I wanted to show you. This is an arrangement of Oh Danny Boy that I did really quickly with a lot of Weird jazz chords probably for this song. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. But you can kind of see um, what they look like. And again, in terms of typing, you know, it's easy to, to recreate this, this chord, E flat 7, parentheses, sharp 11, and it will give you the appropriate parentheses. And then when you type this one, A flat 13, parentheses, sharp 11, flat 9, parentheses, you'll get a different parentheses. Even though I didn't type anything differently, I still type the normal parentheses. So it's a lot of nifty stuff that's going on here. Um, incidentally, let me just show you if, uh, just a sort of a reminder about how the, the typing of these of some of these symbols work. Obviously the minus key uh, will give you the, the minus suffix. D flat plus key will give you the plus suffix. Uh, D flat the letter, the lowercase letter O will give you the diminished. To get a half diminished, it's the uh, percent sign. So shift five for the percent sign, and that will give you the half diminished uh, symbol. And for the uh, delta sign for the major seven, uh, it's option J, I believe it's alt J on Windows. That will give you the 
um, the, the delta sign. And again, there's all kinds of variations of these uh, in the suffix designer. You know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of nifty stuff. Like, look at this one. Here's a minus sign with parentheses and the delta seven um, parentheses. So, um, if you wanted to see it like that, you could. So, a lot of really cool stuff that they did with the suffix library. So yeah, some really great work by uh, uh, Darcy and Finale to create these new fonts to uh, really do some work on that jazz suffix library. It's it's it you know it's a lot of work. There's a lot of great details in this file. So um, and you know, you know interestingly you know philosophically, I'm glad that Finale is taking this this step this this process of collaborating with somebody like Darcy uh, to create something. I mean, Darcy is an expert in this kind of stuff. Um, so there's no per there's no other person that's perfect for this, and I'm glad that they you know contacted him um, uh, to do this. Oh, you know what? One other thing I wanted to point out: um, they actually did change the chord, uh, the setting in the chord to be left aligned. Uh, <laughs> I always uh, laugh because uh, Darcy was always um, adamant that chords should be left aligned, and uh, so they changed that in this document for him, I guess. And all of these chords are now left aligned, which is cool. Um, I would be re remiss if I did not mention that. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this. I hope that they continue to do this with some of these other styles that you can access from uh, the, uh, the the setup wizard. I mean, it's sort of been one criticism of Finale that a lot of people have had is that the default documents, the document styles, were kind of meager in a lot of ways. Like the, they didn't have a lot of stuff. The, some of the settings were not exactly all that great. So it was always incumbent upon the the uh, uh, the users of Finale to sort of create their own templates, change a lot of the settings. We all do it. Um, but this is this is a great step, at least for this particular style um, out of the box this works a lot better it looks a lot nicer so um, kudos to finale for taking those steps and hopefully they will continue to do that with some of the other styles um, just to, to wrap things up just to talk about a couple of the bug fixes this is sort of the list that I got from uh, finale there might be a, a couple small ones uh, that, that aren't here but these are the sort of the major ones the Mac installer uh, no longer creates a duplicate plugins folder and the smart music soft synth component no longer appears as a folder in finder uh, the several problems with stem connections have been resolved I think that was introduced in some of the smoothful files there was some stem connection issues Margins are no longer incorrect when printing on Windows or exporting a PDF on Mac. I have seen that a couple times in the forums, particularly with the Mac exporting PDFs where the margins would get screwed up. Apparently they fixed that in 27.2. Various score markings no longer detach from their handles and jump vertically in Mac OS 11. That's Big Sur. This was always an issue that I was always experienced when I was on Big Sur. You would move an expression and it would move like twice as uh, far away. Um, it was specific to Big Sur. There's a weird workaround that you had to do. Um, uh, it, it's not a problem in Monterey, which I'm currently on. So again, if you're on Big Sur and you're uh, using 27.2, you should have that uh, that bug should be squashed, which is great. Apparently, there were a few minor user interface problems that they resolve in the Spanish and English language. I don't have any more details about that. Um, the rewire functionality no longer uses the terms master and slave. Um, uh, incidentally, rewire still exists in Finale. Rewire is not being um, updated by the manufacturer anymore, so I'm not sure how much longer rewire is actually going to be a viable solution in Finale and uh, going forward, but it's still there, it still works. Um, I've used it in Logic sometimes, but uh, just be aware that that rewire thing may go away sometime in the future. Uh, the ARIA player no longer includes update buttons on the settings tab, which in, in the past led to mismatched player and engine versions. That's something I actually have experienced having mismatched player and engine versions. Um, it's a little bit tricky to, to deal with, so hopefully that uh, fixes will be good for that. And then the PDF document included with the Finale installer now has accurate installation instructions. So. Um, there you go. Those are some of the bug fixes. Again, they're not major unless, you know, actually that one with the jumping expressions is pretty major if you run Big Sur. So I'm glad that they sorted that out. Um, and again, to summarize, this is one of those updates that's going to be really critical for some people, particularly if you use this jazz font. This is a huge upgrade. 
Um, you know, I'm not on a Apple Silicon Mac. I'm no longer using Big Sur. So a lot of these things are not all that important to me, but I know that they will be important to certain people that use Finale. So, you know, it is what it is. That's the 27.2 update. All right, so there you go. Um, that's all there is to it. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. My name is Jason. Um, as always, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will see you soon on the next video.